tell you why. Let me sum up this whole game. I will not give you any new arguments. I will just sum the whole thing up for you. This side wants to say that my, mankind is good, we're naturally good. They give us lovely, sweet arguments about about our goodwill, our compassion, Michael Jackson and, and tanks versus teddy bears because yes, teddy bears are, 131 teddy bears are so much better than one tank and the destruction that one tank can do. These arguments were beautiful and greeting our neighbors and saying hello because we care and we smile and we have compassion. Yes, because in Finland it's quite normal that everybody greets their neighbors and says hello to everybody on the street because they're naturally compassionate. That's how it is, yeah. Um, let me say actually that yes, this, this definition was great. Our feelings, our intentions, our actions, and our results make us who we are. This is what makes us good, apparently, says our proposition. But we showed that in fact, that is exactly why we are evil. Think, when they say that yes, okay, it's the environment that makes us this way, but think as, as my colleagues rightfully said, it's actually innate. When a baby first comes into this world, they haven't experienced much of the environment yet. One of the first things they do is cry. They cry because they're hungry. They cry because they need something. They're just, they need something. It's for themselves. Already from the first day, you're selfish. <laughs> Already, if you know, if you're sitting, we have all felt it, I'm sure, you're sitting in a lecture, a seminar, a conference. If you're hungry, that's all you think about. You're thinking, is my Hesburger coupon still valid? Can I use it after this conference? Because I'm hungry. And you're forgetting what the person is saying in front of you. In addition, um, we also prove not only what, against what the arguments were posed here, but we also give you two different levels of argumentation. The macro level, on the whole of mankind from history, from day one to the present day, we show that even in the first societies, we can show our evil side. Even in today, you can see our evil side. It has not disappeared. Evolution has shown the competition and how we want to outdo each other. It's not that we have all of these charities because we are so good, because we want to do good things. Maybe some people do, but in the end, we all have to think of ourselves in one way or another. These people, for the lovely example that was given about helping, volunteering to clean up these cities that maybe experienced a terrible flood, and these volunteers, they go there, that's lovely. And then what do they do after? They go home. They go home to their perfectly lovely homes and sit there and watch their TV that hasn't been flooded and hasn't been damaged. That is the reality. You go and maybe you help, but then you go home. This is, this is how it, it's an it, an it in us. We think of ourselves. Our primitive instincts, as was shown by my colleagues here, like I have said, is something that we can't avoid. It is a part of us. And our intentions is what really, maybe, maybe what we show, what we act, we might show good things, but it's our intentions. What are we thinking? Maybe I don't look evil. I don't know. But you don't know what I'm thinking. <laughs> That's what really matters here. And you said again that on this side they pose that it's not all people. We can't generalize. Not all people are bad. That's, that's not true. We've shown you examples of why they can be good. Well, it doesn't even have to be that you see that all people are bad. It only takes one person to show what we are all like. It only takes one person. For example, we had one evil person, everyone knows, Hitler, only took one to convince many to destroy many. It doesn't take that much to show, to bring out that darker side, like my colleagues have actually showing their darker side, their lights dimmed here on their side. This is true. We can't avoid it. And maybe it's so that people think that they can they will sacrifice themselves and they will they will give this give their lives for someone else. I don't know if you run into a, a burning building and, and do you think of the consequences? You want to say that you will save a person, but you probably also want to save yourself. Like, let's face it. Or maybe you try to save your drowning dog. You intend to save the dog, but you also want to get it out get out yourself, because otherwise if you save the dog and not yourself, then the dog doesn't have an owner anymore. And then 
well, what's the point? So we always have to think of ourselves in the end. Beyond that, it was said that by the, the proposition that we go beyond animal instincts. We are more than that. And I would say, yeah, we are more than that. We think. And we don't know what everybody else thinks. And this is the truth. In the end, everybody has their own motives, their own thoughts. There is no unselfish good deed, as my colleagues have proven. Everybody has their own instincts. And when it comes down to it, in the right circumstances, this comes out. Even if the circumstances are only the fact that you're hungry and you need food. <laughs> That's everything I have to say. Remember, this is innate in us, and all we have to do is accept it. Thank you very much.